Welcome, welcome, welcome to the DNVR Broncos podcast and welcome to a new era of Broncos football. I'm your host, Zach Stevens, joined by my guy, Henry Chisholm. And of course, we are presented by DraftKings Sportsbook. Make sure to use promo code DNVR over at DraftKings Sportsbook to turn $5 into $150 in free bets by placing a money line bet on any college bowl game or any NFL game. And if that team wins, you get $150. Henry, this is a new era of Broncos football. Is it going to last 10 days with Jerry Rosberg? Or is there a chance that Rosberg can become the full-time head coach? Let's break this down. But first, we got to meet Mr. Rosberg for the first time yesterday. And Hank, I want to know your initial impressions of what was a very different press conference. Yeah, I mean, that's the biggest impression is that he is like in every way, just the opposite of Nathaniel Hackett. Like you go from like young to old, you go from X's and O's to, you know, behind the scenes, whatever it is Jerry does to the, the from the short answers from Nathaniel Hackett over the last couple of weeks to the very long answers from Jerry Rosberg yesterday. I mean, just in every way, even just like there was a there's a toughness about him. You know, there's a there's a football guy vibe about him. Yeah, there's um, a callous to very him. different. Exactly. Exactly. So I do think that that's probably what stands out the most. Um, and and, and Hank, uh, playing off that, it, it's really no surprise that that's the case. I mean, mm -hmm. just look, the Broncos have had three different coaches within this past year. Vic Fangio. More, very much more so the Jerry Rosberg kind of type of avenue. A long time coach in the NFL, old school approach, deals with players in, in a very old school way. And then Vic doesn't work. So what do the Broncos do? They go the complete opposite with Nathaniel Hackett. He's given everyone hugs. He wants to be the player's friends. And then, well, that doesn't work. So what do they do? Well, they go and they, they make uh, the interim head coach someone who's the complete opposite of that. Yeah, I mean, it, the, the crazy thing is they went to a Giro Evero first. Again, mm -hmm. there's some differences between him and Nathaniel Hackett, but there's a lot of similarities between those two as well. Um, so I do think that this offseason when they pick uh, a full-time head coach, there's a good chance that, that he's going to look a lot more like Jerry Rosberg than he does like Nathaniel Hackett. I agree with you. And to, to be fair, too, there's probably more coaches, especially ones that uh, are the head coach profile, that fit more so the Vic Fangio, Rosberg type than they do the Nathaniel Hackett. And that's what was so refreshing about Hackett, especially coming off of three years with Vic, was he was so different. And it's like, oh, man, this is great. Uh, it turned out to be maybe a little too great for the players and we obviously saw that the easy training camp uh preseason where no one played uh and then just players maybe not being afraid of of nathaniel as much as they should and i think jerry rosberg has already set the path straight on who he is henry before even Jerry Rosberg became the interim head coach, he said he had already talked to Randy Gregory, already talked to Dalton Reisner, already talked to Brett Rippon about what happened during the game. And he made it very clear, it's not going to happen again. Yeah. Why was he talking to those people? <laughs> his job was to, in his words, do the math with all the, the Harvard kids or whatever and figure <laughs> out what to do when the offense has the ball. I don't think that the math analytics department crosses over with the discipline department very often. At least maybe that he, would maybe not have been my knew. assumption. Maybe he knew there needed to be a, a, a dad, a, a bad cop in the room. And and the thing, I, I don't necessarily think that that Jerry himself is, is a bad cop. I, I think he just commands respect from these guys, and there is a little fear to him. That uh, that that some other coaches don't have, and and I think it was initially refreshing that Nathaniel Hackett brought the attitude that he did. But I think one of the other things that that happened with that was the coaching staff kind of embraced that attitude, and so I don't think there was really you know the good cop and Nathaniel Hackett and and a lot of bad cops on the team. So I just think Jerry Rosberg being able to command respect it is a little different. Yeah, it is definitely different. 
And I agree. Like, it was nice when Nathaniel Hackett came in, and we all really liked him. But then at this point, everything is easier with hindsight. But I sit here and think, well, it's football. Like, you're not hiring a coach to just go be people's friends. Football coaches need to be kind of mean. Like, that that just needs to be a little piece of who they are. Like, when you're you're dealing with men in their 20s who have to go and, and – play football, whatever, four days a week for four months, there's going to be times when you have to be able to command respect and and kind of set everything straight. And I, I, do, I do not think that that was Nathaniel Hackett's strength. I think you brought up a good point with the rest of the staff. That's not really their strength either. And so I do wonder if Jerry Rosberg's just kind of been that guy all the time yeah. who's had to, <laughs> had to deal with this sort of stuff. And I don't know whether he would have, jumped in like initially like week one if something goes wrong is he the guy who goes and talks to people or that role kind of develop over the the course of the season did it was this the first time it happened I have no idea but I'm glad you brought that up because it is kind of crazy to me that he he was the one who took those guys aside yeah it's really true and Andy clearly a lot of people in the comment section tuned in uh to Rosberg's press conference Mm -hmm. yesterday and, and Andy says Pastor Rosberg with a beautiful sermon. And that's what it was. So typically, uh, head coaches, uh, when they talk to the media, it's between seven and 10 minutes. Jerry Rosberg's uh, just opening statement was just that. It was right around that time. And then he took questions for another 15 minutes. It was a 22 minute press conference where, boy, he dove into everything. He thanked everyone for this opportunity. Uh, He's humbled by this opportunity. He talked about the players. He talked about the decision he made to fire Butch Berry and Dwayne Stukes. His decision, with which I think is very key, because we didn't know until yesterday who that came from. And let's just say I don't think Dwayne Stukes and Jerry Rosberg got along or respected each other that well. And Jerry Rosberg made it very clear. Why did he fire him? He, In his words, well, we were 32nd in a lot of areas in special teams. And last time I checked, there's 32 teams in the NFL. I mean, he just yeah. buried Dwayne Stukes a day after letting him go. Uh, and Butch Berry, not a surprise here. He just he, he spoke highly of Butch as a person which is interesting he did not do with Dwayne Stukes, uh, and, and then just said that the, the offensive line needed a different direction. Neither of those were surprises, Henry. Both of those were going to happen in 10 days, regardless of if Nathaniel Hackett was back or not. So not a surprise there. Uh, and then a, as Andy also said, we saw it, Henry. The Jerry Rosberg was with the tight ends, uh, was really going around to everyone in practice, and he was with the tight ends, teaching them how to block. Week 16 in the NFL week 17 in the NFL and Jerry <laughs> Rosberg's getting in there, getting his hands in, showing the tight ends how to block. So it, it, it's a very different day in Broncos country. And there, there's so many differences too. And one of the things that really stood out to me, and I think that Broncos country can really embrace at least for the next five days is Jerry Rosberg didn't shy away from the Chiefs. And we've seen it from so many different coaches, general managers, executives throughout the year. When asked about the Chiefs, they kind of just say, oh, it's an AFC West game. So it's an important game to win because it's a division game and because it's the next game on our schedule. Uh Uh-uh. Rosberg did not say that at all. In fact, we have a clip of exactly what he said when asked about this 14-game losing streak to the Chiefs. Let's play it. So this week, <clears throat> we're faced with a very worthy opponent, I would say. The Kansas City Chiefs are and have been one of the best teams in the National Football League. They're coached by one of the greatest coaches in National Football League history. I have great respect for Andy Reid and, and a great deal of affection for him, too. He's a fine man. He's been so gracious with my family over the years, and he's a model for all coaches. We should, we should all aspire to be like Andy Reid. And they have an incredible assortment of star players in that team, starting with Patrick Mahomes and and, and Kelsey and Frank Clark and all these guys. They've got it goes on and on. I could list them, and you all know them. And so, who would sign up for this? You know. So you get to coach in the National Football League, huh? Okay. Here's the Kansas City Chiefs. 
Here I am. Choose me. What questions do you have? He's not scared. He's not scared of the Chiefs. And then later, he, he he went on to to say something else uh, about the Chiefs. He he was asked about the 14 game losing streak, and he said uh, uh, he said I, I can't wrap my mind around that. That has to change. That needs to change, and that could change in a couple of days, Henry. But you know that that's that would be a very tough task. But I like how he just addressed the Chiefs straight on how good they are, and how the Broncos, it's unacceptable that they have this losing streak. And I think we're all right there. Try to wrap your mind around what 14-game losing streak is like to a single team. It, that's that's so hard to wrap your mind around. Totally. And, I mean, Nathaniel Hackett was asked basically the same question a few weeks ago. It's a little different. It was a 13-game losing streak at the time. <laughs> oh. But what he said was, Ah, uh, we weren't here for all that. We're just trying to go out there and get a win. It's like, no, it's don't say that. Say that you right. want the losing streak to end. Yep, exactly. Even if you don't really believe it, because he's right. He wasn't here. Neither was Jerry Rosberg. He wasn't here. But you embrace what the team is, what the organization is, what the fans are. And Jerry Rosberg did a great job of that yesterday, just really buying all into the fan base and everything. And then, so, Henry, this kind of transitions us to our next conversation uh, of – is there anything Jerry Rosberg can do in order to be the head coach full-time after the season? And first, before we dive into that, he was asked that. D does he want to be the head coach of the Denver Broncos full-time? Let let's cue it up. I'm desiring that we win two football games these next two weeks. I'm desiring to have a great practice here in about an hour and a half or less. I'm desiring to have great meetings after that practice. I'm desiring to have players play the way that will – Excel it would allow them to excel in their careers. I'm not looking at it like what's happening in, after the season's ends. I'm not trying to build a resume. And I haven't had a resume for 15, 17 years. I haven't needed one. So I don't, I'm not trying to enhance any kind of reputation that I may or may not have. I love it. He, he's just focused in the moment right now. And this is so cool because he also went on to talk about how uh, every great head, every great coach he's been around in the NFL has aspirations to be a head coach. And some guys get that opportunity. Some guys don't. But without saying it, he said, yes, I want to be the head coach of this team. I want to be a head coach my entire life. Henry, he's been a coach of football at, at, at the high school, college, and NFL level for 40 years you know how many times he's been a head coach? I do know. It's it's none. It's how, how does that happen? That that is just crazy. Like I am just shocked that in high school he wasn't a head coach before bumping up to college or college he wasn't a head coach before bumping up to the NFL. That is just insane and he's finally getting this opportunity at 67 years old and the comment section right now loves Jerry Rosberg. I think the media, after talking to him yesterday, said, man, what what a great guy. So happy for this opportunity. But as we know in the NFL, the Broncos just had a really good co good person as a head coach. Everyone loved him as a person. Just because you're a good person and you're likable and you kill press conferences doesn't mean that you're going to be the head coach. So what has to happen? Or I should say, is there anything that can happen over these next two weeks, 10 days for Jerry Rosberg, not necessarily to just get the job, but in order for him to, to get an interview, be considered to be the head coach. I mean, he's got to win both games. You have to beat the Chiefs. You have to beat the Chargers after. I don't think that's going to, uh, to be enough. Like, I have a <laughs> tough time imagining that he's actually going to be the head coach next year. But who knows? I mean... Maybe you go out there. Maybe he fixes the special teams this week. You know, he's been a – what, he was 10 years. He was a special teams coach with the Ravens, been special teams coaches other places. Almost Seems two decades in the NFL special record. teams coach. Exactly, exactly. And, again, like, bring it back to Montana football. I mean, those are the best special teams in the country. Like, they, they're incredible. The, the, the first playoff game, you know, they get a kick for a touchdown, a punt return for a touchdown. The coach gets asked, like, how – when did you know that he was going to break that punt said, Oh, we knew on Monday because we, we saw the way that they, they cover their punts. We knew that if we set things up this way, we were going to have a running lane and, and you hear that stuff and then jump back over to watching the Broncos special teams and think, huh, 
this seems like it's 11 people just running straight forward. I don't think there's anything more to it than that. And so I do wonder if that's one of those things that he can flip around quickly and all of a sudden you get the kick return touchdown this week and you go out there and, and get a good win over the Chiefs. I, I do think that if he goes 2-0, and he has a chance. Like, he'll get an interview. Um, but but at the at the most, that gets him onto that, like, maybe that Dan Quinn, Frank Reich tier and probably at the very bottom of that tier if everything goes perfectly for him over the last two weeks. Yeah, and and I, I'm right there with you, Henry. I mean, he doesn't jump ahead of Jim Harbaugh, no. despite working with John Harbaugh and being True. his best friend. And uh, he called him his best friend. So that's a little in with Harbaugh, which is interesting. But I agree. He, he's not going to do anything these next 10 days that makes him say, oh, he's the guy. We don't need to interview anyone else. But I think if he goes one and one, even if they lose to the Chiefs, but they beat the Chargers, and if the Chargers are playing for something and that's a meaningful game for them, then he he really should get an interview. And in fact, I think he should get an interview if these next two games are respectable. If they're close, if the Broncos cover the spread in both of them uh, and and it's not an embarrassment and players on the team respect him. Uh, and what I really think this could set up so perfectly for is him being the special teams coordinator next year. In fact, I don't like hiring a head coach and then saying, here's uh, a coordinator for you already kind of forcing one down on them. Henry, you're going to be really hard pressed to find a better special teams coordinator out there. I think the issue with that is I don't know if Jerry uh, would want to be a special teams coordinator. He, he did it for almost two decades in the NFL. He did it with the best in Baltimore. He led the best special teams unit in Baltimore alongside John Harbaugh for 10 years. And he retired after doing it for over a decade. He was the assistant head coach with John with John Harbaugh out there. So I don't know if he would want to to just do that. Uh, so I think he may be in it for head coach or nothing. But if you can somehow land him as your special teams coordinator, especially if it's with Jim Harbaugh as the head coach, there's a nice in there with his connection to John Harbaugh. That would just be huge. So I, I really think that if this team respects him, and I think we'll see that if they're able to cover these the spreads in these next two games, uh, or at least make one of them really close, then I think he should get a shot there as well. Just because of, I mean, he's coming into a really tough situation right now. And so far it's been, you know, 72 hours. I think he he's, he's done a lot of good, uh, but just because he gets an interview doesn't mean that he's actually going to get the job. But I, I think that's where I'm at right now. And, and, and I think you're right there too, but I think you make a good point. It's not just instantly going to make him, there's really nothing he can do to instantly be the guy. Exactly. I mean, whether he wants to coach next year is just up to him. Like, obviously, he retired. You'd think he could have been a special teams coordinator somewhere. At the same time, though, he was willing to come out of retirement to be whatever the senior assistant this year. So that's true. I, mean, I don't know what exactly he's looking for in life, but it seems like we've got two things pointing different directions. The other thing about being the Broncos special teams coordinator is and you're probably gonna have a new kicker next year probably going to have a new punter next year probably going to have a new returner next year probably uh going to be making a lot of changes structurally because nothing has been working and so I, i'm not sure if he looks at that and says well i'll get to bring in my own guys and, and see if i can kind of build it from the ground up or if he says why why would i unretire to go coach a really bad special teams unit with a bunch <laughs> of new faces Right, exactly. And instead, I'm sure he could just go right back to Baltimore and, and John would welcome yeah. him with open arms uh, if he wanted to. And just uh, what one more crazy thing, because he was retired from the NFL, but he wasn't retired in the sense of doing nothing. He was taking classes to try and advance hyperbaric oxygen therapy for a healthcare venture he's part of. Speaking of not being able to wrap your minds around anything, I cannot wrap my mind around that. But this guy is just someone at 67 years old. He has all the money in the world to retire. Instead, he's doing this. He's a very driven guy and just someone who I think Broncos country is really going to rally around at least the next two games. Uh, and something that if you can't wrap your mind around hyperbaric oxygen therapy, I think something that everyone listening here can wrap their mind around is betting on football. And checking out our friends over at DraftKings Sportsbook because it's very easy to bet on games. You can either pick money line, 
over under, or you can pick against the spread. There's really only six main options. And then, of course, you can bet on so many props over at DraftKings Sportsbook as well. If you believe that Jerry Rosberg is going to give the Broncos that initial new coach kick, you can bet on them to beat the Chiefs and get incredible odds over at DraftKings Sportsbook. Or if you think that he's going to give them enough of a kick to hang around with the Chiefs, you can bet on them. They're almost a two-touchdown underdog. And so if you believe in Jerry Rosberg, you can get in on that. Let us know what you're betting on as, as our producer, our great producer you here puts down. Let us know what you're betting on this weekend. Anything you like, check out DraftKings Sportsbook. And you can do it with free money, too. If you place a $5 bet for new users on any NFL team or any college team to win their bowl game and they win, you'll get $150 in free bets. That's the best way to bet is with free money and DraftKings is handed out. So use that code DNVR over at DraftKings Sportsbook to get this offer. That's code DNVR at DraftKings Sportsbook and make sure to see show notes for details. And uh, while you're betting this weekend, get yourself a couple of Breckenridge beers. Um, they have a beer for any occasion. I think right now you want a, a little bit heavier beer. We're not going to call it a warm beer this time, but just like a nice <laughs> heavy vanilla porter. Vanilla Porter Jr. after MPJ had a great night, even though yeah. they lost again. Um, so many options there. The Strawberry Sky, the Avalanche, the Broncos Country, Hoppy Pale Ale. It's all good stuff. And if you go over to breckbrew.com, you can use their beer locator They'll tell you where you can go to pick up whatever Breckenridge beer you want to try. They're not just in Colorado. They're in more than 30 states now. So uh, there's a good chance that there's some near you. It's the best stuff you can find. And the best way you could support us is by supporting our partners. So go pick up some Breckenridge beers. Another way you can support us is supporting us check out the dnvr.com where we've got so many articles on jerry rosberg russell wilson's reaction to nathaniel hackett being gone can russ turn things around why does he believe he can turn things around uh henry and i both have articles from yesterday and then henry's also got a hot board of coaches going on because it's a crazy time for us right now and as you guys know we're in the Broncos coaching search, kind of heating up right now. And then also, we're still in the season. We still have two games left. So we've got it all over at ddnvr.com. And if you become a diehard, you get 20% off merch always. 20% off all events. You get 15% off the bar. And you also get uh, a new shirt of your choice every single year. Your your uh, uh, your membership renews so check us out become a diehard and also hit us with a thumbs up if you're tuning in on youtube we would really appreciate it helps us out a lot helps grow this family and the comment section has been great here today so i just want to make sure that we continue to grow that so we'd really appreciate it. and of course if you listen on the podcast side hit us with a five star review you guys know we are going to be here every step of the way during this coaching search so make sure to subscribe and turn on alerts to get the most updated news okay henry there's one more person that we need to talk about really quick before making our game picks. Ajiro Evero, he turned down this position to be the Broncos' interim head coach, and Jerry Rosberg respected the hell out of it. Let's take a listen to, to Jerry talking about that. Maybe not. Maybe maybe, maybe we won't be able uh, to, to listen to that. But, uh, but, but Henry, uh, we, we can just say, uh, what what Jerry said uh, about it. He said uh, he, he made it clear that the reason Evero did not uh, take the job was because he respected Nathaniel Hackett too much. And Jerry, like I said, respected the hell out of that decision. He said, if I was in that same spot, I really wish that I would have done that as well. Yeah, totally. And I thought when I first heard the answer about the resume that we played earlier, I thought that that was kind of a shot at Ajiro mm. Evero because we know he turned that job down. And when Jerry Rosberg's up there saying that I want the job, choose me. I, I'd love to do it. I'm not worried about my resume. I'm all that sort of stuff. Right. It does make you think about Ajiro Evero being the up and coming coach who maybe doesn't want a couple of losses on his resume. Again, I don't think anybody really cares if, Evero loses two games as interim head coach. That's not going to be an issue down the road. Everybody expects it. Um, okay. The fact that he was just an interim head coach, I think would outweigh that. And then Jerry came back around and said all of this stuff that he said about um, Ijiro. And that first thought totally left my mind. It, it's I, I, either Jerry is a great actor or he really does think that 
uh, that Ijiro did the right thing. <laughs> right, exactly. Uh, and so that that kind of brings up questions. It is can Evero do anything over these last two games to improve his resume? Because we already know the Broncos want to interview him. I thought it was very interesting. George Payton said on Tuesday that the Broncos hope to interview Evero for the job. A day after he declined the interim position, I almost think maybe the Broncos are more desperate for Evero than Evero is desperate for the Broncos. We'll, we'll talk to Evero today, so make sure to stay tuned to, to Hank's Twitter, to my Twitter, to the Broncos Twitter. Uh, of course, DNVR underscore Broncos on Twitter. And then, of course, the DNVR.com, where we'll have coverage of this. But it's going to be interesting to see where Evero is because he turned down that job because his best friend, Nathaniel Hackett, got fired. He wanted to respect Hackett and not step in his shoes. So is there anything Evero can do over these last two weeks to improve his resume even more with the Broncos to not just get an interview, but to uh, potentially be the guy next year? How do the Broncos win the AFC West? Obviously they can't this year, but the path going forward, like what do they have to do? Outscore Kansas City, and I don't mean by 17 to 16. <laughs> yep, they have to beat the Chiefs. They have to beat the Chiefs. And uh, what's happened the last two times that Jiro Evero's played the Chiefs? Well, they gave up that 27 lead the first time, and then you go mm -hmm. back to when he was with the Rams, and they what, they lost 52 to 51? Is that what it was? <laughs> that incredible Monday night football game in Mexico? Yes, that one. So Jiro needs to stop the Chiefs from scoring. That's what he needs to do. Again, yeah. I, I, he's. it's unlikely he's going to get the job. It's. It, it, I can't say he wouldn't take the job because I don't know that he's going to have too many options. Yeah. I, I don't think he's getting offered another job, if he, if he even if he does get offered this job, which I don't think he will. But still, there's the loyalty thing. Is he willing to take the job because Nathaniel Hackett was fired? Is he willing to even interview because Nathaniel Hackett was fired. It's it's all just kind of a mess. I don't think that this would be the job he wants. I don't think he's the candidate the Broncos want. And so that just leaves you sitting here thinking he's not going to be the next head coach. Yeah, I'm kind of right there with you. Uh, I think if, if Evero was offered this job, he would take it because there's only – one of 32 of these in the entire world. Yep. But the fact that he turned down the interim job makes me question that just a little bit. But at the same time, Henry, uh, I, I think the Broncos defense, well, I mean, we've seen it statistically. It's falling off a little bit, so it doesn't necessarily make him the top candidate uh, it, it, for, for, for jobs right now. And I, I, I don't think that they'll go that way. But I think that you, 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 you hit it on the head. What he has to do is the defense has to rebound because 51 points to a 4-10 and 10 Rams team was embarrassing. And I know one of it was on the pick six, but 44 points to a Rams team on their fourth quarterback of the year. Uh, that was that was embarrassing. And I also think the second thing that needs to happen is not just the defense be very competitive over these next two games, but I think the defense has to play for Evero. And that's something that they did not do last week. I mean, the, the defense didn't play for Hackett, Evero, themselves. It, it was a mess. And if there's any sort sign of that again, then y y you can't make him the head coach if he's losing his unit in the final weeks of the season. So I think that's the most important thing. And I do think that that shows up on the stat sheet where if they hold the Chiefs to 20 points and Mahomes doesn't look that good – and the Broncos lose 20 to 17. Okay. That's a great performance from Evero, but if there's 20 points at halftime and then the chiefs keep pouring it on. That'll be tough. So I think Evero will get an interview. I think he'll be in the mix, but I think he has a long road to climb just because of, of where the team is specifically where the team was just four days ago. But of course we're going to talk to him. So make sure to stay tuned to all of that. And Henry, like I said, we're not just in a coaching search. We're still in the middle of a season right now. We got games to pick. Let's start with this Broncos Chiefs game. Broncos, crazy enough, they started as nine and a half point underdogs on Sunday morning. Then the line after the game, Monday morning, was 13. 
13 and a half points. The last time I checked over at DraftKings Sportsbook, the line had actually gone down, moved toward the Broncos. DraftKings and Vegas said, you know what? We buy into this Jerry Rosberg guy. Last time I checked, it was at 12 and a half, and it still is 12 and a half, plus 530 uh, if you want to bet the Broncos to win this game. Do they pull off a miracle? No, they don't. <laughs> I I wish I could pick them. Again, like maybe my biggest takeaway from hearing from Jerry Rosberg yesterday is just like, oh, that's that seems like a good guy. I'd love to see him have some success. Like it would be cool to see him go beat the Chiefs and end the streak and do that stuff. It you can't expect that to happen. You just can't. I do think that I mean, it's a new coach game, and because it's a new coach game. Crazy things happen. I mean, Jeff Saturday, he he won his yeah. first game as a head coach, and we've seen what what happened since then. So, I'm I, I think their odds are better with Rosberg than they would have been if Hackett was still around. They're still not good. I still got to take the Chiefs. Yeah, and I'm right there with you though. I do think the odds are better for the Broncos to win this game with, with Rosberg. I mean, after last week, if they had kept Hackett, Henry, I was. <laughs> I was trying to be realistic and not just go crazy, but they gave up 51 to the Rams. How do you not expect the the Chiefs to at least get 40 points, uh, especially because the last time the Broncos played the Chiefs uh, and the Chiefs blew the 27-point lead, I think that's going to make the Chiefs just want to absolutely throttle the Broncos. I think that's still the case now. And I think the Chiefs end up putting 40 on the Broncos. I think the offense might look a little better but really it's not like the Broncos had a major change on offense I mean the offensive line coach is gone but you still have you likely still have Clint Kubiak calling the plays I think we're going to get a little more clarity on that today but it's not like Jerry Rosberg brought in this offensive minded uh, coordinator that's going to change things around so I think the offense is still going to struggle and I'm going 41 to 17 Chiefs Mm. Oh, if I have to put a score on it. <sighs> wow. I mean, see, the, the two things in my mind are just so different. One is that, yeah, the Broncos will look better with Rosberg. And because yeah. of that could be this kind of low scoring, they kind of hang in it type of game. The other is what you said, the Chiefs want to blow them out. And if the Chiefs want to blow them out, they will. So one time you're saying like, yeah, why won't this be 50 yeah. to 10? The other is saying like, Ah, maybe 17 13. So let's just say uh 28 17. 28 oh, 17. so they so they cover. I love it. The well, Broncos do, they? cover. I love it, Henry. You might as well throw some money on it over at DraftKings Sportsbook. Um both of our scores actually my score, the over covers. The Chiefs almost cover the over at 45. And yours, you literally have it being a push. So, Henry, your score is probably right. Right around there. 28-17 is kind of what Vegas is suggesting as well. Ryan also, unsurprisingly, has the Chiefs winning this game. But, hey, last time we all picked the same team to win, there was a big upset. Well, I guess not a big upset. But the Rams beat the Broncos last time we all picked the Broncos to win. So maybe there's something in the water here. And like you said, Henry, that there's kind of two conflicting things with this of the interim, the new head coach bump that the Broncos can get. And then the other thing that I just think is going to be even more important in this game is the Chiefs being so pissed that they let the Broncos almost come back. I totally agree. And Dr. Van Nordstrand said Zach's trying to get people to lose money. Hey, I'm not telling you to bet on the Broncos plus 530 or the Broncos to, to, to cover 12 and a half point spread. Just those odds are pretty crazy if you want to take advantage of them. Um, clearly by my score, I will not be doing that. So that is not betting advice right there. Uh, okay, Henry, two more games in the AFC. We've got the Rams at the Chargers. Is this easy? Uh, it's not easy, honestly. Oh. It's definitely not easy. I, I think uh, you believe I mean, it's Baker. the Chargers, you know? Like, this is the kind of game yeah. they do not win. And the Rams, like, we blame the Broncos. 51 points, though, for, for the Rams last week, <laughs> and that has to count for something. But, yeah, I'm taking the Chargers. Oh, Henry, do it. Pick the Rams. I can't stand, do by it. Your, stand by your guts. Do it. <laughs> um, I can't do it. Yeah. yeah, I'm picking the Chargers as well. You, you wonder... 
and we'll see this over the next few weeks. You wonder if the Chargers, Brandon Staley, Justin Herbert making the playoffs for the first time uh, in, in their careers, if that will take the chargering off them uh, for, for this year and the future, or are they just going to charge her even harder and like lose this week, lose to the Broncos, and they're just going into the postseason cold, and then they have to go on the road and they get blown out or something, and then there's just a, a even worse taste in their mouth. Probably not as bad as last year because that was as bad as bad as it could be. But uh, oh, oh, so I'm very curious to see because. I mean, the Chargers charging isn't just something that Broncos fans say. It's something that the entire NFL and country says. So you wonder how they're going to respond to that. This is a game, a weird game. They're both playing at home since it's in L.A. Uh, and it, you, you just wonder. But I think the Chargers are going to win this one as well. And we have a couple of minutes to talk about this next game. 49ers at Raiders. And it's not necessarily the game that's interesting. But what the heck is going on in Las Vegas? Derek Carr, not just benched for Jared Stidham. And let me remind you, the Raiders are still technically in the playoffs. They are benching Derek Carr to go to Jared Stidham. And on top of that, they are sending Derek Carr home and telling him not to come to the facility for the final two weeks of the season to, for him not to be a distraction. That is wild. Yeah, it's uh, it's all pretty crazy. And again, the reason they're probably doing it is because they can get off that contract for pretty cheap this offseason as long as Derek Carr isn't hurt. Yeah. And so by not playing him for two weeks, and also I think by sending him home and not even letting him practice or anything so he could get any – nothing can happen in practice. I'm, I'm pretty sure that really does save him from – or save the Raiders from having to, to to be stuck with him next season. Which again, saying stuck with him, like it would be a bad thing. Right. I, I don't, I, I'm curious to see how this all plays out. It does feel a lot like one of the insane things that Josh McDaniels would do during his time in Denver. And because of that, it's just tough to see this as anything other than the, the Raiders moving on from Derek Carr, thinking they're going to go get Tom Brady, not getting Tom Brady, not getting their second choice, and then getting some weird third choice with Josh McDaniels thinking he's going to save the guy's career, and all of a sudden that guy sucks, and they win two games next year, and he gets fired. Mm, I like where your head's at because I think that's exactly what could happen. And uh, let's not forget, the Raiders are going to be um, incredibly desperate because Josh McDaniels has had a tough season i know they rebounded well but it felt like the the reason they rebounded this year was because of Derek carr now they're doing this i mean boys this is classic josh mcdaniels this is classic josh mcdaniels jay cutler except josh just decided to wait about 10 months before doing this with Derek carr as opposed uh to to what he did with jay cutler but holy cow this is a massive gamble from Josh McDaniels. Maybe he's been hot at the tables in Vegas living there and he thinks that this gamble is going to work, but this is uh this is really tough. Now Derek Carr has had one of the worst years, if not the worst year of his career, but is that because of Derek Carr or is that because of Josh McDaniels? McDaniels may be getting too cute. Now the gamble is that he lands Tom Brady and Tom Brady uh, with Devonte Adams is able to to have a better year this year or next year than he did this year. I don't think anyone in Broncos country really wants to see Tom go to the Raiders just because of how daunting it could be. Now Tom could also just be old and fall off a cliff. But then on the other hand, I think another person that the Raiders might be targeting is Jimmy Garoppolo. Mm-hmm. Okay, I mean Jimmy Garoppolo's a, a, a winner, but if who would you rather have, Derek Carr or Jimmy Garoppolo? I would still take Carr. I think, yeah, I'd still I, take Carr. I, I, I would too. But, I mean, it, it's a close conversation, but it's not like this gamble is going to be a huge gamble where then the Raiders end up getting this great quarterback. So I think it's very risky and just classic Josh McDaniels, what they're doing there. And, man, the Chargers and Chiefs must just be looking at the rest of the division and and laughing at what's going on as they're going into the playoffs, unfortunately. Yeah. I mean, Carr was fine up until – 
I guess it's these last four games. He hasn't completed more than 55% of his passes in any of those games. He uh, he has, what, six touchdowns, seven interceptions in that stretch. So, again, like his numbers for the season are among the worst of his career. Everything was kind of fine before that, and I just I I wonder why. I I wonder what happened. Yeah, I I do as well. And in a weird way, I kind of feel bad for Derek Carr. I mean, yeah. he he he's embraced the Raiders like no other, which makes Broncos fans kind of hate it when, when someone embraces the Raiders that much. But I mean, boy, did he just pour his heart and soul into that organization. And this is the treatment that he gets. And like you said, Henry, uh, I think they can also save some money on his contract this year by not playing him the final two games. So that's just the Raiders organization being the Raiders organization. So maybe the Chargers are Charger, but we know the Raiders are going to Raider this one. Yes, they are. And we talked about, oh, wait, so there's a game. 49ers going into Las Vegas. Jared Stidham, the starting quarterback. Who do you think is going to win? It's got to be the 49ers. <laughs> like, I, I actually bet against the 49ers this week. I do think we're going to get a more realistic game from Brock Purdy here at some mm. point. Like he's got to lose him one. And if it doesn't happen in the next couple of weeks, I've, I've, I've got to believe it's going to happen to him in the playoffs. But I mean, again, it's the Raiders and it's Jarrett Stidham. So they, I've got to take the 49ers. Yeah. I'm going the 49ers as well. And Ryan also has the 49ers. So Ryan yeah. has the chiefs 49ers and chargers and that's actually what we all have so maybe this is going to be a good week for all of us or a terrible week for all of us and henry i got an update to our standings Ooh. right now you are in first place Let's with go. 26 wins and 21 losses i I'm also in first place with 26 oh. wins and 21 losses. But Ryan, maybe why he's not on the pod today. He's a little sad. 24 wins, 23 losses. So, Henry, you and I have a two-game lead on Ryan heading into the final two weeks of the season. And we're not going to be able to get any separation from each other. So maybe next week we have to agree that, well, no, we'll, we'll pick playoff games as well. We, we, we should do that yeah. uh, with, with the playoffs there. And a quick update to our uh, season-long team. Henry, you're catching up to me. I have 82 wins on the season. You have 77 wins. You had a okay. great week. I think you only missed one game last week. Let's you were on fire. And Ryan, probably out of luck for this one. He is at 70 wins with two weeks left. And we do have playoffs, but this is when mm -hmm. the majority of stuff will happen. So you're, you're catching up. You and I are in a very tough competition heading into the final stretch. And if you want to see maybe a tough competition, check out our friends over at Game Time because you can get to the Broncos Chargers game probably at a very affordable price. We've got the link in our description on YouTube. We've got the link in our description on podcast. If you click on that link, it not only helps us out, but it takes you right to where you need to be on Game Time for that Broncos Chargers game in Week 18. You can also go and find Nuggets games, Avs games, and of course, they're all around the country. So anywhere else that you want to watch games, use game time and make sure to click on the URL, the link URL in our description. So check them out over at game time. And uh, also head on over to FOCO. They've got a whole bunch of cool collectibles and uh, they've got all sorts of different memorabilia. It's, it's They have everything. Like it just typical everyday items that are Broncos branded. So, you know, if you want like a, a glass or a mug, they'll have Broncos glasses and mugs, you know, so they have all sorts of different things. Like it's pretty crazy the variety, but they also have like the T-shirts and the the Hawaiian shirts and and some hats and specifically a bunch of like sun hats. And they have, uh, I think, some sunglasses. So all sorts of different things over there at FOCO. It's tough to really explain all of them because there are just so many. So you should head on over there. You can do that by clicking the link in the description for this podcast or for this YouTube video, depending on where you're watching. Um, and again, that's uh, FOCO.com. Oh, and uh, if you use the code DNVR, you can get 10% off all non-presale items. Uh, so either click the link, go over to foco.com, and use that code DNVR. And let's go over to our comment section, Henry, where we've got some people chiming in. And the first comment coming in from our friend, um, 
Oh, no, I can't find it. Coming in from our friend Nash Bronco says, Hi, fellas. I think the appeal of head coaching jobs is a bit overplayed in some cases. It's more about the situation and the roster and coordinators are into me. But what a great discussion. We'll have plenty to talk about candidates in the future. Non-Broncos question because they ruined Christmas. What are your guys' favorite TV shows you watched this year? Mine would be Andor and Yellowstone. I'm not much of a TV guy, so I'm trying to find some good shows to watch during the off season henry yeah. can you help us out here i don't watch a lot of tv either we <laughs> no. we did watch yellowstone so there's a new season and we're almost done with the season before that and that is a really good show that's one worth watching but like is, I don't is that really... like uh is that like a cowboy show yeah like a like a wild west sort of show it's not in the past oh okay it's, it's like it's modern ranchers and all their mm. drama you know, about their drama. Um, I th- to me, like, I don't really like watch TV shows with storyline. Like, I like to watch The Office or like I'll turn on The Simpsons. Ever since that Nick football game, I've been tempted to just turn on some SpongeBob because every couple of years I go through a phase where it's like, yeah, just as you're working to have it on in, in the background, it's like, yeah, it's it's good stuff. It's good stuff. <laughs> but you haven't yet because you said you no. wanted to, but it doesn't seem like you have. Just haven't gotten uh, around to it. I actually need my Disney Plus password. I can't remember what it is and haven't figured it out. <laughs> um, the show, I think the only TV show that I've watched this year uh, is the Jeffrey Dahmer one. And oh, yeah. unfortunately, I have this this issue. I, I'm not really going to put it on me. My fiance has this issue where she she just doesn't like watching TV shows or movies at all. So I'll try to get her to watch one with me and we'll make it through... 30% of the TV show and then we'll just stop watching. And we've had that issue with pretty much every show. So we've watched the first three or four episodes of Dahmer really good, but then we just haven't watched any for the last two months. So I have no idea if it, why well, I think I know how it ends because it's a real thing, but have you watched Dahmer? Yes. I forgot about that one. That one was good. Um, Man, it know. is creepy. It, it is creepy. Yeah. But- <laughs> I mean, that's that's the point. People love that stuff. That's why I listen to like crime podcasts. I don't get yeah. into all that, though. It's just I don't know. There's something that's just kind of wrong about it. And it Especially I don't actually when it's real. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. It is fine, though. But I mean, my girlfriend has a similar thing. It's mostly, though, that like she can't she'll just like fall asleep halfway through anything <laughs> we watch. And so then she'll say like, oh, yeah, well, I guess it's time to go to bed. And I'll just be like, well. <laughs> I was I per, I was still watching, but if that's what we're gonna do, or like right before she left to go home for Christmas, she wanted to watch Avatar, so we could go watch the new Avatar when she, oh, she came back. Yep. It's like, well, it's like a two and a half hour, three hour movie, and it's nine o'clock. Like I know how this plays out. When we watch this, we're gonna watch it. So did you? No, 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 no. <laughs> oh, wow, you put your foot down. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, I, I love it. Um, and uh, and it, it, yeah, I mean, Nash Bronco said there's plenty of time to talk about candidates. That is the truth. And from my understanding, Henry, uh, I, I believe that the Broncos are, are doing all their research this week. Next week, they may interview a candidate or two that's not in the NFL next week. But then the interviews will really start picking up uh, the following week once the season is over when they can just focus on that. So uh, kind of a a little bit of downtime uh, until things really get hot. But that's exactly why you got to go check out Henry's hot board because Mm -hmm. he's updating that thing. Every candidate you can possibly know it's going to get you ready for the search. Heck, the Broncos might even want to check that out since you you pretty much got every candidate on there. And our next comment coming in from Bronc Oilers says, here's the case for Jim Harbaugh. One. The Broncos are going to have to offer the next head coach a fair deal of money and security to make his job attractive. No other NFL ownership group is better equipped to offer compensation that could pry him away from Michigan than the Walter Penner group. Completely agree. Two, Condoleezza Rice is going to be involved in the coaching search. She is a close friend of Jim's and used to help him recruit players during his time at Stanford. Kevin O'Connell made it far in the race last time around by being Darren Moogie's guy, and I have no doubt that Jim Harbaugh will be Condi's guy. Totally agree. Three, he's exactly what this team needs. He's experienced. He's turned the results and culture around every single place he's been. And most of all, every Harbaugh coach team has an unmistakable identity. 
They're tough. They're physical. They're disciplined and they're intense. They're going to pound the rock on offense and lean on the run or play action opportunities. That formula worked to turn a struggling Alex Smith into a top 15 quarterback. When he had a chance to draft his guy, he took an athletic passer with a great deep ball and Kaepernick. Despite his limits as a pocket passer, he was able to get him to a Super Bowl. He can certainly do the same for Russ and is the right kind of personality to keep him in check. Give him a six-year, $15 million per year deal with the insurance that if Russ doesn't work out, he'll still have the opportunity to rebuild things with his own guy. It's a swing for the fences one that I think makes sense and that the fans and ownership would trust. Yeah, I mean, I think all that makes sense. I think like six years, $15 million, that that might be the number that, that it takes. It could be $20 million. You could get it done with $10 million. Or maybe you can knock a couple years off. Who knows? But I do think that and that's why we're all excited about it for, for basically those reasons. And now we just have to wait and see what happens. Henry, from people that I've talked to and, and just also just my own common sense, I don't think it's the Broncos having to uh, – uh, or Harbaugh having to sell himself to the Broncos. I think it's the other way around. I think it's the Broncos having to sell themselves to Harbaugh because he's got a great gig in Michigan. Are you kidding me? He just got a pay raise, making $7 million, which is a lot, but he could make a little more someplace else. But he's got a, a great job. He's working at his alma mater. He's done a fantastic job there. And then also, he's probably going to have the pick of any NFL job he wants. And he's unlike Sean Payton. He's not bored right now. If he doesn't like any of these op openings right now, he can just stay at Michigan another year until another job opens up that he wants. So mm -hmm. it's going to be the Broncos convincing Jim to, to come and he, you show him the money. You certainly, he is not tied to Russell Wilson if he comes here. Now, obviously, just with how tough of a situation it would be, I don't think the Broncos would rebuild with Jim Harbaugh as the head coach. So I do think he'd get Russ for, for another year. But if it doesn't work out, that's not going to be on Jim. That's going to be on George Payton. And then George Payton's going to be out. And Jim Harbaugh is going to be the de facto general manager. He'll get to bring his guy in. He's going to have all the time in the world to make things turn around. So I think it's more so the Broncos convincing him. And there's no better way to convince someone than to show them the money. Definitely. Definitely. I'm right there with you. And again, I mean... <laughs> I did just look up. It's so $7 million salary. He gets another 500,000 for making the college football playoff. He'll get another million if they win the championship. And typically there's some uh, uh, like academic bonuses in there too. And, and I would guess that there's up to another like $500,000 in things that he can add. But you know, there's, there's a big difference between even if he wins the championship, which i don't believe he probably will that'd be eight and a half to nine million dollars and 15 million dollars is a lot more yeah and you know what just give him incentives on this as well you make the playoffs we'll give you another mil on top of the 15 you make the super bowl another mil you win the super bowl <laughs> another five mil you know what, what whatever it is like you said henry the broncos made 140 million dollars in profit last year yep. they they can afford him just based off of that let alone uh, the the money that the Walton Penners have. And we have one super chat coming in from Valley Band. It says, do you think the defense is enough to entice a good coach to come in, knowing that they were only a touchdown a game away from having a winning record? So that's uh, the tough part is a touchdown a game is quite a bit. <laughs> right. I mean, that's not a small amount. You right. know, I think Russ even pointed out yesterday the – you know, we've we've lost so many one score games and a few in overtime. And, you know, the Vikings are 11 and 0 in those. Well, yes, but also I think it's like two thirds or 70 percent, something like that of NFL games are one score games. Yeah. So it's not like like that's just what happens in the NFL. NFL yeah. games are close. Yeah. Like that's it's it's if they're the fact that the Broncos haven't played more close games is probably more concerning than the fact that they have had so many one score games, you know? Yeah. It, it, and no, I don't think so. The, the Broncos defense has been great mm -hmm. since Super Bowl 50, uh, at least, at least good, very good in those other times. And, uh, 
defense doesn't do it in the NFL. Is it, you know, a nice little bonus for, for a coach to come in and say, man, this offense is a mess, but at least I have a good defense that, 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 that I can work with. Yeah. It's a nice bonus, but I don't think that's attracting anyone. I certainly don't think it's attracting Sean Payton, Jim Harbaugh, any of the top candidates uh, at, at all, especially because, this defense, again, when we take a step back from it at the end of the year, Henry, it's probably going to be a the top 10 defense, not a top five, not a top three, not an elite defense. It's going to be a very good defense, but not a great one um, because Broncos given up over 20 points per game. Now, still, it's the seventh best in the NFL. If you take away that pick six, it's they're giving up 19.8 points. Again, still good, but not elite. Definitely. Yeah, I mean – it's it's good to have but like you said unless you really have like a great group it isn't a huge selling point like it's i mean if if somebody's taking this job over another job you do look and say like well what do you have and what they have is the defense and and so you do it it doesn't count for nothing like if if it comes down to which roster is better that that is a factor in that conversation for sure. The biggest factor for the Broncos at this point. But yeah, I don't think anybody's saying we gotta we gotta go to Denver because they have this defense. Oh, we can just turn around the league's worst offense and we'll be just fine. But like, no, the, that's a big challenge to turn that offense around. Yeah, what the Broncos really have going for them is money. Let it rain yep. on the new head coach. Bring them in. And speaking of that, Hank. I want to get your predictions for the college football playoff games this week. Michigan and TCU, who do you have? Oof. Uh, this is a tough one. This is a really tough one. Michigan, I think, is like an eight-point favorite. I know. But Mark Perry, who I covered with the Buffs and I've been talking to a little bit throughout the season, is now with TCU. Okay. As like the a starting safety, and I really like mm. him, and I really want to see him succeed. Pick it, pick him. Seven and a half point dogs. Just pick him. Uh, give me TCU. <laughs> Michigan's there running we back go. There too. Yeah, give me TCU. I love it. I love it. Give me Michigan because I think that the Broncos want Michigan to win this game and then win the national championship which I don't think is going to happen, but win this game. And then Jim Harbaugh can kind of say, you know what? I've done everything I can for Michigan. Let me go take on the NFL. Give me Michigan in this one. And then Ohio state, Georgia, Ohio state is a six and a half point dog. How much uh, you like CJ Stroud? Yeah, it's, it's Georgia here. Yeah. I, I'm just upset. We don't get to watch Caleb Williams. That's what I'm upset about. I was so excited, and then they go and blow the Pac-12 championship <laughs> yeah. game because yeah. he's he's a guy who I think actually could go and and pull off an upset like this. But it's it's just I I don't even think it's that close. You got to go Georgia. Yeah, you have to go Georgia. Georgia is so good. It is just insane and sad that how good they are uh so enjoy your football weekend happy new year everyone we will see you right after the broncos chiefs game let's see if the jerry rosberg era can get started off on an incredibly high note thank you all so much for tuning in hit us with a thumbs up on your way out five star review we really appreciate all of you tuning in with us today we will see you see you after the game on the dnvr broncos podcast